Hello everybody, my name is Xenomorph, and today, as you can probably can tell, we're going to be playing some Elite Dangerous. Now, unlike my previous video where we're bounty hunting in my anaconda, uh, today we're going to be doing some material farming for the engineers for my new ship, the Fertilance, which is sitting in front of us. Uh, let me just see if I can hide the HUD here. And there she is. Actually, I have an even better idea. Uh, hide this. Here. There we go. There she is. The beautiful machine that she is. So yeah, this is my new ship, the Fertilance. I've called it the Broadsword. And um, it's a pretty nice ship. Fits in a medium large uh, landing pad. Got four medium hard points and a, one huge hard point on the, back, on the underside. So yeah, um, today we're going to be farming some materials for the engineers so I can um, upgrade some of the components that are in here. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, as always, with me today is my wonderful AI companion Eden. Hello Eden. Greetings, Commander. Yeah. And um... Dismiss the ship. As you wish. Lift off. Engaging drawing. So for those of you who are uh, wondering, uh, the Eden doesn't come with the game. It's a third party add-on by a group called HCS Voice Packs. And they've done a ton of different... Um, Holding pattern engaged different uh, voice packs by well-renowned people. Uh, just to name a few, you got Tom Baker, one of the previous uh, Doctor Who's. Uh, you got William Shatner, the voice of the first Captain James T. Kirk. And a whole bunch of others on their website. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description below. Uh, about, I want to say $12 off the top of my head, can't exactly remember the number. But yeah, if you want, again, I'll link this, uh, put a link in the description so you guys can check them out. And uh, yeah, let's start going, finding some materials. Now, uh, what I'm going to try and get is some cesium. Oh, not cesium, but um, selenium, I think that's how it's pronounced. So I can um, upgrade one of my components. Once I've got some selenium, then I'll probably head back. noticed that I didn't have my full pips into uh, the engines there. I mean, what I had would probably be fine, but it's always nice to have that extra one, or extra power just in case. Especially when driving around on a low-G planet, and especially, especially when you're driving around on a high-G planet. You'll need those engine pips to not blow up when you land. So what do we got here? Phosphorus, nickel, sulfur, and more nickel. Not what I'm looking for, but I'll take them. Deploy the cargo scoop. It's been a while since I've been on a planetary surface, so I've forgotten how long 
Or how far you slide sometimes on Logi worlds. I actually take I have taken a pretty long break from Elite Dangerous itself. As you probably tell from the upload spread from my last video to this one. And I'm not gonna have a very set upload schedule like uh, many of others. Only because I don't have a lot of time to do YouTube videos. As I'm busy trying to find work and other stuff like that. Try not to hit those big rocks, otherwise it would damage my SRV. SRV buggy. I think I'll keep calling it a buggy, to be honest. Uh, don't worry about that. It'll be fine. So yeah, the upgrade I'm trying to go for is for my multi-cannons. I got four medium gimbaled on there. And I need selenium to do the uh, grade four uh, upgrade with Todd the Blast McQuinn. If I can, no, I need to be farther away. Okay, let's go this way. Uh, yeah, so Todd the Blast McQuinn's the guy that you go to see with the multi cannons. And uh, the grade four, I'm going for grade four efficient. So it'll uh, increase my. I'll take the iron. Uh, increase my damage. Don't think it's the rate of fire. And power drawer and power distributor drawer. Which is what I would like. We'll also try to see if we can get any um, special effects on it as well. As those are always appreciated. Now I do have some on my anaconda that I can actually take off. So really we only need enough for two. Imagine doing this in real life. Or if this was a real... Oh dear. Okay, there we go. I'm going to try not to base jump off of this cliff because my next one's coming up. Or my next uh, rock that I need to shoot. I believe it's actually that down there. Oh, that, there it is. That, uh, don't know if you guys spotted it in the bottom right there, but uh, it's the slightly miscolored rock. Down there. No, stop! Mm, hit the rock, but it's, at least stopped us. There you go. Hop back into the turret. Controlling the turret with the Hotas is not the best thing in the world. So, excuse my jittery aim there. Let's see what we have. Ooh, a lot of good stuff here. I'll definitely take all of this, because some of these are pretty rare, rare ingredients, or materials. Deploy cargo scoop. Deploying the cargo scoop. Okay, what first? I uh, guess I'll take some of these. Going backwards, okay. Yeah, like I said, some of the most of these are pretty rare actually. Hmm. And any new things that I discover here go towards the explorer rank anyways. And probably one of the reasons that I took a brick break from uh, Elite Dangerous is because I did a passage mission that actually took me 6,000 light years away from 
uh, my home base, which is in uh, LTT 1997. So, so yeah, that uh, took a while to finish. So, needed. I did need a break after that. I mean, it was pretty awesome actually. The trip got to see a lot of cool things. Got some neutron stars too, which was really nice. The, the Frontier has really done a good job of designing the uh, objects in the universe here. They're really dangerous. Like the planets, uh, the stars, everything. It's really well done. do it. Come on. Come on. That's it. There we go. Hmm. It's always a... It's always a bad feeling when you're here with the sound of your tires just spinning up to full and you're not going anywhere. Especially if you're on a cliff, because then you know you're just going to be sliding back, right back down it again. Close that. Uh, not good. I wish one thing that I do hope they add in maybe later on in the games or later on in the year or in one of the different updates are uh, different SRVs like um, just kind of diversify it a bit maybe one with more cargo space but goes has a top lower top speed one that's got again more armor but has a lower top speed like a combat one or a heavy combat one, because this is kind of just a generalized uh, like a vehicle. So yeah, maybe one that's more inclined for combat, more heavily armored and heavily weaponized, but uh, goes slower. Maybe one that's got um, more inclined for scout. So it's got less armor, maybe doesn't, or has a lighter gun. Sorry about that. You see how far you slide because it's a high G. Probably this is probably an ice planet to be honest as well. Uh, and check that here. Yeah, it's an icy body, so it's gonna be. It doesn't have a lot of traction, eh? But yeah, going back to uh, all the SRVs, the Scout one that's uh, less armored maybe has a lighter weapon on the top of it, and that goes faster. Trying to think of what other ones we might be able to have. Those are really the only two variants. And then this, just the, uh, just the regular one. Just diversify it a bit. Maybe the Scout one better off-road and stuff. I'll just take these. Got some music too, which is pretty nice. Probably can't hear it because uh, of all the tires or all the noise that 
the uh, service making. See if we can find. Let's keep going. See if we can find some uh, selenium, Sele selenium, selenium. sideways, don't want to do that. Well, that's gravity at play. And down I go. Alright, let's try and halt it here. There we go. Looks like we've got something this way. Don't know what it would be. Especially now that we're driving on ice worlds and stuff. Having a more off-road vehicle with better tires that could actually grip onto different surfaces and stuff would be really nice. Okay, so we got two. There's one over here. We'll go to this one first. And we'll just one off to the right that we'll go to. Uh, please have some selenium. That would make my day. No selenium. Okay, what about the one to the right here? Go into the turret. Selenium. No selenium. Alrighty, so it looks like there's some more stuff up here. Uh, I really don't want to leave you guys a video of just me driving around shooting rocks and not getting a, what we need, well, what I need. But uh, unfortunately that might be what it is. <laughs> and if it is, I do apologize. I'll try and get another one up after I find it, or I find the stuff that I need, and um, yeah, and then we'll, I'll probably put another video up of me actually modifying the multi-cannons and then going testing them out at the uh, Compromise Nav Beacon or an Anarchy system or something. Because, yeah, I don't imagine that watching some random guy on the internet drive around on a planet in a video game shooting at a bunch of rocks looking for some element and not actually finding it would be very entertaining. But hey, you never know. I'm feeling lucky. What do we got? Ah, okay. But again, we got some really nice stuff here. Deploy the cargo scoop. Uh, I gotta wait a bit more between me talking to you guys and actually talking to um, Eden there. Because um, the software that it uses is called Voice Attack. Uh, I'll link that in the description as well. And it's just it's, it's basic speech recognition software. But if... Uh, I 
keep talking like this to you guys and then I immediately switch over to um, try and give a command to Eden, then um, it obviously wouldn't register because it's still... it'll come up as the end of the sentence that I'm talking. So... oops, they're up. So yeah. Close the cargo scoop. Uh, I would, would have to be retracted, but I'm not gonna. Yeah, and there's only, and there's also only a, like uh, certain specific ways you can say the commands to register. And but uh, I mean, with all the voice packs that the uh, HCS have done, I'm not. I'm actually very happy, as probably everyone else that buys the voice packs are uh, with what they come with. Yeah, and they're very high quality. I recommend if you buy Elite Dangerous or they've done some of the um, like voice packs or can be used with Star Citizen if you uh, buy that. So, yeah. I suggest checking them out. And I would I highly recommend if you're going to play Elite Dangerous or any other game that they have voice packs for it get one it makes it kind of adds on to the whole um, kind of the whole I guess atmosphere of the game and keep in mind none, none of the voice packs are canon but um, yeah it just adds a lot more atmosphere and especially if you're playing with a hotas or a joystick and you can't hit all of your key binds and stuff, or you can't put all your binds onto your throttle quadrant. I mean, if you're using like a SciTech Rhino, then you probably have everything mapped to like three buttons that'll do 20,000 different things. But if you're using like a regular, I guess, not HOTAS or anything, then um, yeah, I would highly recommend getting a voice attack and a voice pack and it'll make things so much easier because you can, ju you can just say a command or if you want to customize your own commands and put it in that way you can do that and you can just say it and it'll do it for you it's so much easier uh, okay still no selenium Close by this way. Ooh, this one down here. No, 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 don't want to go that way. There we go. And I'm going to overshoot it, I can already tell. Yep, I'm gonna have to go all the way back up that bloody hill. Oh well. It's not too far away. No, I want it this way. There it is. Take that arsenic. Deploy cargo scoop. The cargo scoop deployed. There we go. Where is it? There it is. Come on, get it. There we go. It didn't even touch the ground. Close. Retract the cargo scoop. Retracting cargo there scoop. There we go. Again, there's a there's only specific ways you can say the commands to actually get it to register. Uh, but you can customize them and change them to different things. So. I've put close the cargo scoop as one, it's the retract command. I should probably change that because I stay, I, I always say close it. Just more natural than retract, really.
Ooh. Easy. Don't make it more damage than I already have. I mean, it takes quite a bit for an SRV to blow up for obvious reasons, because if it didn't, then you wouldn't have a lot of people exploring planetary surfaces and stuff like that. But, yeah. Trying to find something on the scanner on the front there, just above my little kind of moving map radar thingy, whatever you want to call it. Which it looks like there's some stuff this way, so we'll head this way. What I am looking forward to is probably with everyone else again that plays this game is um, planets with atmosphere, because uh, currently they're not in-game. Uh, they're planned to come in some update far, far, far in the future, whenever that is. But yeah, it's going to be so nice. I mean, they've done a, dec a really good job with the no-atmosphere planets, like these, that uh, when... Um, atmospheric planet landings come in, then it's going to be really, really nice. I wonder how they're going to do it, because, um... Uh, is the metal that is used in building the ships, uh... Well, I guess it would have to be heat-proof, so... It, especially with fuel scoops and getting so close to the sun. But, um... So I guess it would withstand, uh entering the atmosphere from space, but, um, yeah, I guess they would work it kind of like it is already, where it just go into orbital flight, you get your drop to out of uh, super cruise, and then instead of just gliding down to the surface, then you might then it'll drop you just onto the layer of the atmosphere, then you'd glide in like that whilst experiencing the effects of re-entry, or entry, depending if you haven't been to the planet before. Oh boy, this does not look good. I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, I believe I just hit it. I did. Whoops. Alright, come on, have something for me. No. Huh. Alrighty. Guess we gotta go up the hill. Ah, dear. Ah. Uh, boy. Whilst this is happening. So the way you can tell what materials are on which planet, if this if the system's already been scanned and stuff, is you can go into this tab here in the system map, and it'll tell you the planetary or the planet materials here. So currently, the planet we're on has a 4.4% um, composition of selenium, which is the one we're looking for, which is actually higher than germanium and we've seen quite a bit of that well we've seen two lumps of that so I don't know why we haven't seen any of it so far um, trying to see if there's actually a better place we can go here for it all these are 4.4s, 3s, 1s um, doesn't even have it have it doesn't have it I think they're mostly on ice planets so yeah this is one of the only ones in the system at least that have um, oh come on that have a higher chance of dropping it
I mean, uh, when you pick up one of those little fragments of material, it gives you three in your inventory. So if I could just find like two fragments, that would be fantastic. I mean, knowing how my look works, it's probably, probably going to find them right at the end of the video. So, yeah. Don't know how that's going to work out. And if I keep fucking flipping around, then it's not going to work real well, is it? Come on, buddy, you can do it. Uh, that's one I've already done. So yeah, the skinnier and longer the line is on the scanner there, uh, the farther away it is, and the wider Oh, if it's wide and but short, then it's closer. But as it gets closer, you can kind of tell it kind of shortens up on the sides there. Becomes skinny, and you want it short and skinny. Because oh, you want it to get shorter and skinnier, because then you know that you're getting closer to it. Ah, there it is. Okay, let's see what we got here. Bronzite, Karanite. What do we got? Germanium. Again, but no... Uh, no... Selenium. Goodness me. For an element that's apparently more common than germanium on this planet, there's um, not a lot of it. I wonder why that is. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong place on the planet. I read on a forum somewhere that um, to find selenium, it's going to be on this planet in and around the craters. I mean, this isn't really a crater, but... Well, how about this? Um, we'll check this one out. I'll recall my ship, and then... Um, we'll head to a different spot on the planet, because I'm not driving there. Not this far into the video. I mean, I'm probably going to have to head up to... to the top of the range, anyways. Only three ops come out. Yeah, okay. Recall the ship. Receive coordinates set. Okay. Approaching pick a point. SRV visual confirmed. Make your way back, please. There she is up there. Where are you going? I wish I had the uh, track IR or an Oculus set up with this. It would make tracking so much easier. And free up a button on my HOTAS. But alas, I do not have the money for either one of those. Unfortunately. Come on, keep it going. There we go. Touchdown. Right Coordinates are degrees longitude, degrees latitude. Uh, that other voice that you hear, that's uh, EDDI. Which is another third-party tool that you can use with voice attack. 
again, very useful. I'll link that in the description as well. Um, bring me a board. No, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll link EDDI in the description as well, so you guys can check that out. Uh, it's a tool that kind of... Um, Buggy docked. It's what allows... Um, kind of the app to... Are you ready to leave? Like, receive names and information on systems and stuff. So, we'll just launch Lift here. Off. Raise landing gear. Gear coming up. Looks like there's another ship around here, actually. Hmm. Looking for a crater. Over here, actually. How about that? We'll go over here. Uh, this ring you see here is a point of interest, or POI. So if we go down on the planet now... Oh, there's actually a crater below us, which is nice. Uh, you see those lights down there? Uh, that's what the POI would be directing us to, and it's just kind of, I don't know if it's a randomly generated point on the map, but, um, or on the planets, on the map, but yeah, they're just, uh, there's some of these dotted around certain planets, and yeah, you can go around, see them, usually they're like mining operations and stuff. Or sometimes they might be illegal stuff that you can get bounties with. Deploy landing gear. Gear down. Let's see what it is. Touchdown. Coordinates are 137.115707 degrees longitude, minus 27.732094 degrees latitude. Yeah, the only unfortunate bit, I'm pretty sure you can turn it off though, is it tells you all that, all s some random stuff that you probably don't want to know. Uh, deploy the SRV. Deploy the SRV. Acknowledged. There we go. Prepping SRV. Buggy away. Drive assist. Let's go check it out. Where is she? She's over here. What do we got? Uh, the skimmers are clean here. What about this data point here? Oh dear, that's not good. Ah, it's private. I don't particularly feel like getting a bounty today. So we're just gonna leave that be and head over to the crater that I saw earlier when we're coming down here. And hit the landing pad. Bring me aboard. Okay, executing now. Nah. Stand by. Securing the ship. SRV docked. Alrighty. Let's get going Lift over off. to that crater. I guess I really Are didn't need to, to get in the ship again. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll just land in here somewhere. Touchdown. Coordinates are 137.176422 degrees longitude, minus 27.795698 degrees latitude. Buggy away. There we go. Alrighty. So let's see if we can find some here. Um, turn around, actually. Dismiss the ship. 
As you wish. Lift off. Dry is engaging. And there she goes. The majestic beast. Okay. Holding pattern engaging. Okay, I already see the bit that we need. So, oh no! 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 Turn around! Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's probably because we hit it, though. Tried trying to get it in the air there. Didn't work out. Oh well. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Ah, oh, come on. Germanium, but no. Selenium. Okay, there's another one, I think, back here. That sign winder is still around. I don't know why. Maybe it's security or something of the sort. Okay. Unfortunately, with the time that we have here, uh, after the, I hit this next uh, rock, then I'm gonna have to end the video, as um, I forgot to start my timer and I don't know how long it is. But I feel like it's probably about half an hour. So, actually, there's two there. So maybe if I quickly now. Get this. Nothing. Okay, then we'll go. I think I see that one in the distance there. I'm on a straightaway. Give it the gas. Give it the gas. Okay. Knock on wood that this has some selenium in it. It doesn't and yeah, I'm just gonna have to upload a different video of me outfitting or uh, upgrading my multi cannons and then going to test them out. Ooh, this looks like a big one. Alrighty. Oof. What have we got? Oh! It isn't a rock. It's a crashed satellite. Oh, okay. Well, I mean... Why not? Bounty voucher of 1,000 yeah. credits received from Independent Desiat Green Party. Let's go actually check this out. Oh, and we can scan it. So, yeah, this is, um, looks to be a crashed nav beacon or a satellite, actually. Or some kind of data point. Hmm. Well certainly is interesting. Hide the hood there again. Hmm. Cool. I wonder what brought it down. Maybe it's the Thargoids. I mean, um... They are getting pretty active again, in this, or recently at least, with all of the 
high predictions and uh, now with the barnacles and stuff. Yeah. I wonder what's going to happen with all that. Are they going to be friendly? Are they going to be hostile? Or do we have the chance to make them friendly or make them hostile during uh, like f a first encounter kind of thing? Hmm. Okay. There's another one close by. We'll head to that and then I will actually finish the video. I'll end the video there. Come on, give me something. Yes! Oh, Murphy's Law, right? Oh my goodness. Dear me. Okay. Well. There you go, folks. The end of the video, and I get what I'm looking for. Oh dear. Well. Thank you all for watching. Um, this is Xenomorph, signing off.